one of the features of Jewish worship before the destruction of the temple was that at the heart of the, the temple itself was built in three sections. There was the outer section and then there was the main part of the temple and then there was the innermost part of the temple which they called the Holy of Holies. And the Holy of Holies could only be entered once a year by the high priest. So it was very, very few people had access to the Holy of Holies. And originally the Holy of Holies contained that most um, sacred artifact to the Jews, which was the covenant. It was the Ark of the Covenant, which was kept in the Holy of Holies, which contained, among other things, the tablets on which the Ten Commandments were written. And they, it was considered within the Ark of the Covenant that God's presence, God, God dwelt and God lived and God's presence was there in the Holy of Holies in the Ark of the Covenant. And the Holy of Holies was separated from the rest of the temple by a veil, a thick curtain, which would be only passed through by the high priest once a year. And when he went in, he would have a, a rope tied around his waist so that if the worst was to happen and he for some reason died in, in there, no one else had to go in, they could just pull him out. But the sacred, most sacred part of the temple was in a sense protected the sacredness of, of, of God's presence was protected by this curtain and by the practice of only one person going in there once a year and in a similar way in Catholic architecture in in early Catholic architecture that developed particularly in places like England what was called a rood screen not R-U-D-E but R-O-O-D and the rood screen effectively veiled the sanctuary, it covered part of the sanctuary and even in Germany in Lent in you know years gone by, centuries gone by, they would erect a curtain instead of a root screen, it would be a curtain covering the entire sanctuary, a big purple curtain for the entirety of Lent. And similarly in Orthodox churches and Eastern Catholic Rite churches they have an iconostasis behind which is celebrated the sacred mystery. And the whole sense of the way the architecture works there is that the most sacred things are, are in a sense, preserved and their, their sacredness is sort of retained and enhanced by the fact that they're very rarely seen, they're not sort of open to, you know, it's not sort of access all areas. And I think having these architectural phenomena in mind is a good way to get us into understanding the virtue of modesty, which is the gift of the fruit of the Holy Spirit that we're talking about and reflecting on today. Modesty is in a sense like that veil in the Jewish temple that protects the sacred. Modesty is not a, a virtue or a um, value that's really highly treasured these days. In fact, it's generally seen as a vice. <laughs> But particularly um, the Catholic writers, and I think it was Pope John Paul II, had a beautiful line in regards to pornography, which applies very much also to um, modesty. And he said that the problem with pornography is that it shows too little rather than too much. The problem is not that it shows too much, but rather that it shows too little. And this is precisely what modesty serves. Modesty is a servant of true beauty. Modesty is not the same thing as a sort of prudish, um, a sort of prudishness. Modesty allows inner beauty to shine forth through physical beauty appropriately adorned. And I think it also helps to have a sense of modesty also works sacramentally. So for us, the sacraments are material realities that communicate spiritual realities. 
material realities that communicate spiritual realities. And we are, in a sense, sacramental because we are both body and soul. And so modesty helps the body communicate the, the spiritual reality of the inner beauty of the soul. It, 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 it's sort of like a, it, it acts sacramentally. And of course, the greatest um, model of modesty is our Blessed Mother, the Lord's own mother. She who was, as Fulton Sheen described her, the most beautiful of all women. And so today we ask our Blessed Mother to intercede for us, to intercede for our world, especially in this Western world, to help kindle a and begin a recovery of the value of modesty. Not because it's, it's somehow prudish, but because it enables us to see and access and protect true beauty, interior beauty. Our Lady Help of Christians, pray for us. Let us stand to pray.